It is hard to imagine the rest of this election season without Tim Rossert. Whether it was during election night, presidential debates, face-to-face -face interviews, Tim was always at the center of the action. But above all, every president and anyone who wanted to be president eventually had to face questions from Tim. And it's been that way ever since his very first broadcast on Meet the Press. From NBC News, this is Meet the Press with Tim Russert. White House Chief of Staff John Sununu may be gone, and the president indeed has a new campaign team. Just you, say, you have said wait, just you say. have said that part of your forty now, billion dollars. I have also told your program is one hundred eighty billion dollars. Yes, may I finish? May I finish? It was a simple question. Well, you've already finished. Uh, well, go I'll, finish I'll, again. Let's, let's, it's your program. It's please. your program. You can do anything you want to with it. I believe I have to be aggressive, but I also have to be civil. File gate, travel gate, Whitewater. What's wrong with those as legitimate? Look at all this Whitewater stuff. What's come out of it? Absolutely nothing. Significant American casualties. Well, I don't. I don't think it's likely to unfold that way, Tim, because I really do believe we will be greeted as liberals. Finally, Mr. Secretary, in February 2003, you... He's still staff. asking me questions. Yeah. I think that was one of your staff, Mr. Secretary. I don't think that's appropriate. Get, Emily, get out of the way. Bring the camera back, please. I think we're back on, Tim. Go ahead with your last question. Thank you very much, sir. There's a lot of concern that the judgments made about the war before we went in have just proven not to be correct. We were told we'd be greeted as liberators, that there would not be a long, protracted, bloody insurrection. How could we have been so wrong? But it's fair to say you're thinking about running for president in 2008. Uh, it's fair, yes. And so when you said to me in January, I will not, that statement is no longer operative. With us for the full hour, an exclusive interview with Democratic presidential candidate, Senator Barack Obama. What has the controversy over Reverend Jeremiah Wright done to your campaign? Well, uh, obviously it's distracted us. An exclusive interview with Democrat Hillary Clinton. In New Hampshire, now the famous scene in Portsmouth where you showed some emotion, was that exhaustion, frustration? What was it? No, it was actually, Tim, a moment of real emotional connection. John McCain, thanks for joining us and sharing your views. I haven't had so much fun since my last interrogation. <laughs> of all the highlights of Tim Russell's career, perhaps there is none greater or more memorable than Election Night 2000. Who can forget Florida, 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 Tim's low-tech little whiteboard? Four years ago, Tim took a look back at that long night. I had been on the Today Show that morning, and Matt Lauer said in one word, what would you advise the, the viewers? And I said, Florida, Florida, Florida. As goes Florida, we'll go the nation. If I'm mistaken, I'll be the first to admit it. And then we sat down it's at the anchor desk at 7 p.m. And we expected a late night. We thought maybe midnight, 1 o'clock, uh, which would be very exciting for us because so many elections are over so quickly. An important win for Vice President Al Gore. NBC News projects that he wins the 25 electoral votes in the state of Florida. We were told in our earpieces that we would be pulling back on Florida because the vote had tightened considerably. You just stayed with these simple boards. You wouldn't have those problems, those high flute computers, Tom. This is the answer. We felt that uh, as a news organization, we want to get things right. And then when we f called Florida for Bush. George Bush is the president-elect of the United States. He has won the state of Florida, according to our projections. Uh, there was a sense that, okay, this was it that Bush was going to win the presidency because he had won Ohio and he won Florida. And then we got word that Al Gore was on his way to the hall in Tennessee to concede. And one small footnote in history, uh, but for Blackberry, uh, I don't think Al Gore would have gotten the message not to go out on the stage and concede because all the cell phones were down as they went into the hall. We don't just have egg in our face, we've got omelet all over our suits uh, at this point. When the projections were wrong, and it was just so chaotic because one state was for Gore, one for Bush. As part of the NBC News team, uh, I didn't feel too good. Uh, we got it wrong in terms of the projection. And um, that's why I was determined to use my little grease board to try to make it right <laughs> the best I could. 
Well, I started out with the back of a legal pad, just a pen on a cardboard uh, of a pad. I had a sense that voters and viewers were confused. All right, uh, NBC's Tim Russert will let him do his arithmetic. Luke, we're going to put your father to the test tonight. <laughs> and I tried to bring clarity to the situation. So I just started writing it in a, to make it understandable. Uh, Jeff Zucker was in the control room, said to somebody, go get him a dry erase board, that legal pad's running out of space. But little did I know, um, people around the country uh, were trying to find information. And they got to NBC, and they saw Tom and explaining things in a clearly cogent, wonderful way. And this little tiny board that I'm whipping away on, and people stayed with us. They said, yeah, that's, this is, we're getting real information here. I just started writing the various states that were, had not been called and what the, their electoral vote count was. And then when they would be called, I'd wipe them away and add them to the columns. And finally, I had one state left, Florida. And I said, Tom, look at this, Florida, Florida, Florida. I can't believe this. And uh, it was, I remember my son, um, Luke, uh, asked me, called me, he said, Dad, can I have that board? And I said, well, actually, I had two of them. And I was deeply touched that my son wanted a part of uh, my career, uh, this board of Election Night 2000, until he said, you know what that thing's worth on eBay? So, <laughs> so I, gave, I have one for my son, I have one for the museum. And during this election year, of course, Tim Russert was the wingman for Brian Williams, who tonight is in Bagram in Afghanistan, where he has completed four days of reporting from that in Battle of Country. Ryan, there was no one quite like Tim at your side when you were doing a debate or special coverage or here on NBC Nightly News on what was likely to happen next. Well, Tom, here I was today trying to count up the number of debates that Tim and I did together, let alone the number of political events you anchored with Tim. When you came on NBC Nightly News earlier this evening, I said to you and the audience, we all feel like we lost a partner. Our viewers lost their Sunday morning partner. I lost my weeknight evening partner for politics. He was your wingman for so many years. Few knew him better than you did. You lost a partner here, and yet in all of our NBC family collective grief, we yield only to Tim's own family uh, on this night. One of the sad things for me is that the audience didn't get to know the Tim Russell that we knew behind the scenes. We all knew about his passion for politics, and that came through on the screen, obviously. But he was a real rock and roll aficionado. He took great pride in booking Bruce Springsteen well, he when he was an unknown at John Carroll University in Cleveland. And for the rest of his days, he tried to get the boss to come on meet the president. As much as Springsteen uh, admired Tim, he stayed away. That was part of our bond, Tom, as you know. We were both Irish Catholic kids, originally from upstate New York, but then I moved at age 10 to the Jersey Shore, home of Bruce Springsteen, so we had that love as well. There's a reason when we saw each other in the newsroom, we called each other brother. It sure feels, at least for the two of us and for a whole lot of other people, like we've lost one tonight. And a lot of people don't know this, but in fact, in 1968, one of the people in the audience at Woodstock was Tim Russert, but, of course, Tim was wearing a Buffalo Bills jersey, and he was looking for guys to throw the football around with, and there were not a lot of them in that audience that night, Brian. That's right, Tom. Thanks for having me. Brian Williams tonight on his way back from Afghanistan. When we come back, where did it come from, that passion for politics and life itself? Tim's greatest inspiration, his father, Big Ross, next.